Hello, and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. Today, this morning, it is still dark, but the sun is slowly coming into its own. <laughs> we have the famous, venerable, and well-known, not to mention ubiquitous, Seagram Seven Crown introduced in February 1934. I believe it was February 9th, 1934, that's okay. Product of Indiana, and it's always been made in Indiana and always at the same facility in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Okay. Versus Club 400, Special Reserve, introduced in 1930, introduced in 1951 in Baltimore, Maryland, by Majestic Distilling, still produced in Baltimore, Maryland, by Majestic Distilling, a subsidiary of the Sazerac Company, owners of other famous brands, such as Blanton's, Pappy Van Winkle, and Buffalo Trace. Seagram's is owned by Diageo, makers of other famous brands such as 100 Piper Scotch. Um, and uh, Crown Royal, I couldn't think of the name, Crown Royal. And Captain Morgan Rum. And Guinness, <laughs> heard of Guinness beer? Okay, anyway. It's a fascinating thing to look at Diageo's website. You could spend so much time looking at so many brands, just like with Sazerac. Okay, now, now, okay. Club, they're both 80 proof. Uh, Club 400 is aged a minimum of three years, probably meaning exactly three years. <laughs> I'm talking about the straight whiskeys in there, the 20%. 80% grain neutral spirits, which is the base for whiskey, but it's unaged, you see unaged uh this is a 75 percent 25 percent blend 75 percent unaged corn distillate and 25 percent straight whiskey what type i don't know american blended whiskey seven crown distiller since 1857. That is true. Now, um, it says blended and bottled by the Seven Crown Distilling Company, Norwalk, Connecticut. I think Norwalk is their headquarters, the corporate offices. I don't think there's any actual bottling plants there. I think this is from Lawrenceburg. Okay. Um, what else? It says very clearly on the back, Diageo. And I saved money on this because, um, see, there's no age statement, right? What does that mean? Well, that means it's at least four years aged, okay? If there's no age statement, that means that the whiskeys have to be aged a minimum of four. Now, if you go below four, you must put an age statement. If it's above four, you, you may put one or you may not. It's up to you. Okay. <clears throat> what else? I remember I was trying to figure out why seven crown? Why the seven crowns? And I couldn't figure it out. You know, it's glasses. It's this. So it's bothering me to no end. And I have no definitive uh, information as of yet, but I have a good theory. And I think it's correct. Damn. I mean, excuse the language. Damn. Okay, I went to Mass yesterday at four and <laughs> at Holy Ghost, all right? So that's why I'm not getting ready to go today. Gurgley says 1223 in London, 
Woo. Afternoon. Atum says, Daddy making the whiskey reviews again. What is Guinness? <laughs> yeah, what is Guinness? Oh, it's some beer. You might have heard of it. Uh, see those seven crowns? I'm looking at this yesterday. One big crown in the middle and six on each side. And I said, ah, that's a menorah. Bronfen family, Jewish immigrants from, what, Lithuania? Took over the Seagram's company in the 1920s, what, 1926? Seven crowns uh, or seven lampstands. Hmm. I told you I thought it was some kind of signpost. So I think that was like a, a sort of a, a, a shout out, a call out. What I mean, the seven crowns was a call out to other Jews from the Bronfen family, and that it would just go over most people's head, heads, and then other, peop other people in the know would say, ah, I'm going to buy seven crown. Okay, now, um, Club 400, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what that is. Maybe it's some sort of invitation only club. <laughs> in Maryland at one time, even today, I don't know. Might have something to do with a grotto. Um, a shrine, shrine grotto, whatever, who cares? I don't know. But, let's go on with the tasting, all right. I know one thing, the Sazerac Company is owned by Mr. and Mrs. William Goldring, and they're not Presbyterians. I'll put it to you like that. They're not, they are not Presbyterians. Okay. Uh, if you can break that code or get that drift, follow my lead. Okay. Uh, so. I noticed that with the previous Club 400 taste challenges that there was a distinct melon flavor, cantaloupe. Wasn't an off flavor, it wasn't a nasty flavor, it just was a present flavor. Remember that movie they make, A Clear and Present Flavor? You remember that movie, A Clear and Present Flavor. Um, you like the brown bottle? I like the brown bottle. Protects the whiskey. Now, they'll tell you on the website, some uh, you can save it for a long time. But they'll say, you can save the whiskey for a long time, but they say, try not to uh, put it in the light or in the heat, or especially in the light, you know. And then you got these clear bottle whiskey sitting out under the store lights for years, you know, and you'll say, why does this taste okay, off or bad? Um, what else? What else? Uh, oh, a lot of times, like on Proof 66 website, these tier three whiskeys, they'll say they're okay. You know, they might be well regarded, but they'll present odd, what do they say? Exotic flavors. Yeah, exotic flavors. Oh, yep, yeah, there's daylight coming. Daylight's coming. Zizor says what's up ronald what's up oh just doing a taste challenge here at the early hour now i'm looking at the seagram seven crown website this is one of their websites because there's another one called thebar.com one word thebar.com seagram seven crown blended whiskey this is a new website because they didn't have one up until recently it might have come in online in 2018. i kept saying when it's Diageo going to make a Seagram's website. They probably watched my video and hurriedly created it, and I'm glad they did. Thank you, Diageo, for creating this because I complained about the lack of its existence. Okay. Seagram's Seven Crown is an American icon. They put that in all caps. An American icon. It really is, actually. With a rich heritage. 
a blended American whiskey, Seagram Seven Crown is carefully blended and aged in oak. Okay, you're gonna pick up some oak too. With its smooth, sweet taste, they need a comma there, smooth, comma, sweet taste, that's okay. Smooth, sweet taste, and creamy vanilla finish. Hmm. Seagram Seven Crown, Seagram's Seven Crown Approachable. No, it should be Seagram's Seven Crowns apostrophe. That's a possessive crowns. Oh, well, I got to teach these people grammar. Approachable and smooth taste profile stands up against today's biggest shot brands. <laughs> now, I guess if you're going to go, you may as well go bold, right? Boy, they calling people out. Seagram Seven Crown. I'll add that apostrophe. Yes. Approachable and smooth taste profile stands up against today's biggest shot brands. And in its signature drink, the Seven and Seven. Oh, okay. So they're saying we'll stand up against you, shot brands. We're not just a well drink. We're not just a mixer. You want to do shots? You want to do it neat? Grab a seven crown, baby. Okay, taste features, tasting features. Nose, alluring, clean, and crisp. Once again, we need a comma. These are clauses, you see. Um, that's okay. <laughs> alluring, clean, and crisp with, you see crisp, end, new claw, with a hint of citrus. Okay, that's okay. So I went to high school, so I learned those things. Alluring, clean, and crisp with a hint of citrus. Let's see about that. Alluring. Yes, it, it's alluring me. Here I am. Here I am at 6.34 a.m. I'm being allured into drinking. I meant to say tasting, not drinking, 6.35. That's a joke. I mean, I'm tasting, but I've never drank this early. I think I'm crazy. Ooh. Clean and crisp. It is clean. It is crisp. A hint of citrus. Yeah, I'll get like marmalade. You know, like that orange peel. I'm getting vanilla in the nose too, no joke. And some dried flowers. A lot of nectar too, like um, honeysuckle. Nice, nice, nice taste. Smooth, sweet taste. Smooth. Comma, sweet taste, smooth, sweet taste. Well, that's okay. Finish. Creamy, comma, vanilla finish. See, without the comma, you're saying creamy vanilla, like it's a special type of vanilla, a creamy vanilla. No, there's just vanilla. So it's a creamy, we break. <laughs> See, I should get a job writing for these people, not just them, for everybody. Creamy vanilla finish. Okay, so smooth, sweet taste and creamy vanilla finish. We're going to check back on that later. They also have the Seagram's Crown, Seven Crown Dark Honey. Hmm. And Crown Orchard Apple, which I've seen at the store, but I've never had it. This thing don't want to scroll right. Y'all got to fix your website. Okay, well. Okay, let's go back. All right, staunch risk indicator says, "Hey, it's got a little person waving." Okay, all right, time to time to mix. Now, what does Sazerac say about Club Four Hundred whiskey? Uh, nothing. They just show pictures of each bottle design. Okay, that's all they got, and then they give you product specifications below. 80 proof, and you can get in this bottle, that bottle, this bottle, that bottle, this bottle. See, I got the, five, the 375 milliliter bottle, plastic. It's all plastic. That's good if you want to bring it in somewhere that you're not supposed to bring in a bottle, and they're doing metal detector. It won't, it won't register, and it's thin, see, so... It'll just be so perfect right there in your vest pocket. Ooh, 
like you want to go to a game, but you don't want to pay four dollars for a bottle of water. So you could fill that up with water. And drink it. Of course, they'll probably think you're drinking vodka, you know, they see you, because you know at these games they'll say, Oh, it's about safety. Nah, it's really about them trying to make you buy everything. <laughs> and they'll have like one water fountain every 500 yards just so they can claim they have a water fountain in case somebody has a medical emergency and needs water. I'm not trying to be a tightwad. I'm just saying these games, these uh, sporting events are just like outrageously expensive. You know, you could buy a beer for only $9. I went to uh, the St. Louis Cardinals baseball game. I think it was against the Cubs and they had Bush beer, Bush now, you know, Bush pint cans for only $9. I said, wow, $9. And to imagine, I can buy a 12-pack of Bush for like $8. What a bargain. I mean, can't, can't beat a, you can't top a bargain like that. Of course, you could get a mixed drink at the Louisiana Superdome, the Mercedes-Benz Superdome, and it would only be about 12 bucks. And... Uh, It only cost them about 22 cents to make it. Staunch Risk says, can you walk in with the bottle empty and fill from water fountain? Oh, no. Oh, no. Ah, no empty bottles. They say that's a homeland security risk. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Sure, it's a homeland security risk. In other words, they want you to pay $4 for that bottle of water that costs them four cents to make. If it costs four cents, I doubt that. Oh boy, here goes the uh, spam. I have some spam in the fridge. I have some spam in the cabinet. Oh no, not spam. Um, I got the great value imitation brand. I'm gonna try that. That's probably this. It might be made at the same place as spam. I'm gonna check the product. Uh, I gotta check that uh, establishment code. Okay. Autumn says, Ronald, you need some hurricane. <laughs> I have a I have a four pack of pints right there in that fridge. Every time I open the fridge, they're they're rattling, they're shaking, like, come on, come on, come on. You know, you know, you know you want to pop open this can. And I'm like, I do, but um uh, last night, remember I told you I only drink 22 to 24 beers a week. That's the truth. So last week, which ended at midnight, I drank 21 beers. And so I got back from the basketball game, which was horrible. Southeastern Louisiana got beat by McNeese State, and it was horrible. I said, I, my quote is one more beer left. But you know what? I didn't drink anything. I just went to bed, drank some water, and went to bed. I said, okay. I went under my quota. You know, I don't have to drink. And I didn't. And I was fine. I slept. Slept pretty well. Okay. Uh, Ronald, you need to... Oh. Less tempt, yasa. Okay. I was actually more tempted to drink coffee this morning because I just w loved that coffee. And it was so good. All right. Uh, okay, the aroma here. Generalized whiskey, you know, like the U.S. government says, a, an aroma commonly associated with whiskey, right? You know the smell. I'm going to send you some 800. 800. <clears throat> Any, anything cold makes my nose. And I'm not sick. <sighs> okay. Let's go over here. They don't smell alike. You're always talking about bottles shaking. Do you live on a fault line? No, I'm just kidding. I mean, you know what I mean? They're not literally shaking. They're just figuratively shaking. You know, they're saying, come on, come on, crack me open, baby. You should review cigars. Oh, yeah. I can see that. Can you see that? Louisiana Cigar Reviews. Today, we're looking at Talon Sweet Originals. 
The Talon Suite original was introduced in 1979. You know, I mean, I do research on. Mm, smell the uh, the beautiful book bouquet of the wrapping paper as it interacts with the sweet original aroma of the Talon. <laughs> I don't guess I'm gonna do that. Okay. Talons cost one dollar forty nine cents here plus tax. No joke. One forty nine. Hey guys, it's Greg. He heavy lisp says Atum. Hmm. Okay. All right. Let's get down to business. Okay. This one here has a much stronger oak aroma. Strong wood, oak, oak, wood. And I find this one over here to my, in my left hand, you might be your right. It seems to have more of a fruit. Now, what did this sequence say, citrus? And I said marmalade. Rest in peace, Greg's beer reviews. What does that mean? There's wood here too, though. <clears throat> but this one's smokier and heavier wood. Now, don't let anybody fool you. I said this yesterday morning. Don't let people fool you and say, ah, they don't have any aroma. Those blended whiskeys got nothing. Wrong. Huba D says, hello, Jay. Hello, Huba D. These things have complex aromas. So if you're going to get up here and say they don't have any aroma or flavor, you're just making it up. You're lying. Or you have no sense of smell. This one has a complex and a beautiful aroma, actually. It smells more aged. So I already think this is the Seagram's, and I think this is the uh, Club 400, but I don't know. I have to do a taste. You know what I mean? This is a taste challenge, not a, a smell challenge. Now, why did I shake like that? Because I got a major hit of rye spice. And what do we know about Sazerac whiskeys? They are heavily rye. They have a much higher rye mash bill than other brands. And what else do we know about Majestic Distilling? <laughs> They were one of the, isn't smell an integral part of taste, says staunch risk indicate, yes. And, and Majestic Distilling of Baltimore County, Maryland was one of the few companies to keep rye whiskey on the market, namely Pikesville. And I saw Pikesville rye at Matherns uh, yesterday, day before yesterday. So that one had a strong rye note. And I think that, I mean, it's so peppery. It's like, whoa. You say, no, but blended whiskey doesn't have any flavor. Oh, yeah, well, why did that have a strong rye hit? So, oh, I mean, the one over here is so much wood. I mean, it's like you chew one on a toothpick, but it's charred, right? You ever chewed on a charred tooth? I mean, it's, it's just wood. It's charred wood. I mean, it's oak. It's vanilla and no rye spice. I mean, maybe the slightest touch of it, but really none. Neither one of these have a strong bourbon taste. You know what I mean? Like corn on corn. You get some of these blended whiskeys and it's like corn on corn, like the uh, Beams 8 Star. I mean, that thing is just like, ho, oh, whoa, 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 corn, 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 baby. Staunch wrist said, blends are too complex for me to understand, this is why I'm here. Yeah, they're, they are complex actually. And the Canadian even more so, I believe. Atum says, Ronnie, you're Catholic, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Since Easter Vigil 2001. Sweetness citrus rind, 
dried flowers, mellow wood. It's got to be Seagram's. It's got to be. It's got to be. It's got to be. I swear it is like. If you hate rye, you're going to hate this. And my thinking is that if you hate rye whiskey, you're going to hate anything Sazerac makes. Because those people are fixated on rye, man. I, believe, I can't believe we lost Greg. Gotta be. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Greg just had a birthday, turned 61. Now, there is rye over there. I mean, I just ran it about it. There is wood over there and it's char, but it's 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 a very underneath flavor as opposed to the rye, which is very um, overt. Now I'm gonna try to pick up the, the, the melon. Remember I said the cantaloupe, cantaloupe, so let's see, that should be the tip off, you see. I think it has that. But let's go back over here, you see. There ain't no cantaloupe over here. That's just. To him. I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Neither one of y'all know. Um, much more wood. Wood. Well, which one's better? Now, here's the question. Which one wins the taste challenge? Uh, <clears throat> I need some water. This this stuff's got too much. Uh, I feel like I've been chewing on wood. Ooh, that's giving me the frisson. Too much wood. Ronald, when are you doing a Pacifico light review, says Zizor. I can't get it. I cannot get that beer. I guess never, huh? What you know about that? Oh, yeah. Get ready because... We got some exciting reviews coming up. What you know about that? We got malt liquor, always malt liquor videos coming up. Well, 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 well. You got to wear that chocolate duster jacket. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. That's patent leather. That's why it's so squeaky. You know, it's got that like coating on it, you know. That is one comfortable leather jacket, man. My daddy gave it to me. I love that jacket. That jacket's like a jacket to me. Okay, I think this is Club 400. Let's go. Reveal, reveal, reveal. I hope we don't get in a crisis right now. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I got it. I have it. I have it correct. It's fashion, man. Right. And this is the Seagram's. I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it. Now, is there a winner? No, it's a tie. They both taste good. You like whiskey that tastes good? Hey, well, you can go to Walmart or Winn-Dixie or Rouse's or Publix or Walmart or any other store that sells whiskey on planet Earth and get Seagram 7. And if you're lucky, you'll get a Diageo coupon like I got that was on the bottleneck with a little tag. And it said, if I bought two bottles of Diageo product, any one, didn't matter, I would get seven bucks refund. So naturally, I bought a bottle of Seagram 7 and I bought a bottle of Seagram's VO. I sent in the little coupon and they say allow four to six weeks, but actually only took about 
two weeks, three weeks. Yeah, maybe it was three weeks, but it wasn't long. And they sent me the check. They just sent a check in the mail, like a check with the address on one side. Like it was just, it wasn't in an envelope. It was just literally the check. And uh, so I went and cashed it, seven bucks. <laughs> Give me your address, and when I go to Mexico, I can send you the Pacifico Light beer. Oh, come on, Zazo. That's too expensive to send me something like that. That's such a common item. It's not worth the money. Next time I go to Mexico, I'm going to look for it. I'm going to look for it. Uh, I like to go to Mexico and find all those bizarre beer brands, you know, that I can't get here. That jacket is like a jacket to me, says Ronnie 2018. That's right. Okay. So... I did it again. I got it right. There's something about Club 400. I know I'm talking loud. You say that's the whiskey talking. Blame it on the rain. Uh, the whiskey. Um, you know, there's something about Club 400. It has such a distinct flavor. And uh, I mean, good grief. If you can get a bottle of this, I'm talking about a standard glass bottle, which they make for $7.99, why wouldn't you buy it? Now, this is going to cost you $11.99. Of course, you might be able to get a coupon. Diageo's forever running those coupons. And like me and John Anile said, they're figuring you're not going to ever send it in. You're going to you're gonna say, oh, look, a coupon, $7. And you're going to get it. You're going to buy the whiskeys. You're going to set it on the counter. And you're never going to get to it because you're not going to take five minutes to fill out the form. And then it's going to expire and they don't have to pay you. See that they're figuring you're going to do that. And I bet you a lot of people do that. So I did it. I got it right again. I'm a, I have a perfect score with Club 400. And I don't know if I've ever done that with any other whiskey, have a perfect score. But good grief. <clears throat> the next competition, and maybe that'll be Tuesday, maybe. I don't know. Hopefully, will be. I still have a lot left, half the bottle. Club 400 versus, drum roll, brrr, Seagram's VO, and that one's from Canada. That's a Canadian blended whiskey. It's not made with grain neutral spirit. It's made with corn whiskey, which is kind of like the same thing, but supposedly it has to be aged three years in Canada. Barley and rye, but I don't find the VO tastes much different from Seagram's seven i mean in a blind taste test they're kind of like the same from my recollection let's see taste smooth sweet taste let's see oh it's real smooth there ain't nothing harsh about seagram seven buddy boy creamy vanilla finish uh yeah it's kind of creamy like you ever had taylor cream sherry that's a divine item. That's a jewel. And you know that a lot of these blended whiskeys, okay, Russ Penn has an interesting comment. Yeah. Uh, do you know that a lot of blended whiskeys use blend, sh blending sherry in the whiskey? Blending sherry. They're allowed to use like, what is it, up to 2% sherry. You know, that's a wine to uh, help help round out the taste. That's a fact. So if you want to, let, let's let's end this now. We're going to end this hangout. But you see, you see, I've been doing these videos for over seven years. Ozazo says, by the way, I love your beer reviews, Ronald. You're a beer master. I don't know if I'm a beer master. I mean, I'm good at debating about these beers, having debates, arguing back and forth. You make your point, I'll make my point. So I'm like a great debater, almost like a master debater, a master debater with it. Take care. Cheers from Tucson, Arizona. Oh, cheers back to you, Zizor. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's been over seven years since I started doing these reviews. And um, y'all might remember what I told you when you when I first got started in this business, the guys that last fly straight, low profile. And the guys that want it all, 
chicas, champagne, flash. They don't last. So that's it. It's over. All right. <sighs> Whew. Our chihuahua. Will Leone says, don't drink too much. You have a big game this afternoon. Go Saints. Hello, Will Leone. Thanks for watching. I know, right? Oh, I'm not going to drink too much. I um. Although my friend David's talking about coming over, or he wants me to go to his house, you know, the guy with the big beard. He said, let's do a taste challenge. I mean, let's do some tastings if you want. I said, okay. We might. He likes to do all, you know, all kind of really fancy craft beers that cost a fortune. But then he said he liked the idea. He wanted to do regular beers too because he didn't want people to think he was a beer snob and only drank like real fancy stuff. He does buy stuff that's $20 a bottle. That's, that's the truth. But he's like me, you know, he drinks standby beers. Like he'll go and buy a 20, an 18 pack of Miller High Life and drink it. You know, or he'll buy a, a 30 pack of Milwaukee's Best Premium. So he's not somebody that only drinks craft beer. I mean, that's just maybe a perception people have, but, but he, he said, no, he wanted to do more regular beers too. Remember, he did this Schlitz Gold Bull, him and the mystery lady, and they said that was one of the best regular beers they ever had. They were just raving on the Gold Bull, the charcoal filter Gold Bull, 8.5%. Uh, so, and then like if we go to the hot rod shop on Causeway, they always drink a Miller High Life at the hot rod shop. They are not um, stuck up. But I mean, they'll drink the craft beers too, interchangeably. You know how we do. When are you going to do a Bud versus Bush review? Um, I don't think I'm ever going to do that because that would be no kind of challenge. You know what I mean? Like, you're never going to confuse Budweiser with Bush. Bush is made with corn syrup and it tastes like a corn chip and it's so thin and dull. And Budweiser is made with rice and it's so ricey. And it would just be no challenge. I mean, I would, I don't dislike bush beer, especially when it's August and it's really hot. But um, I don't really run behind bush. Okay. I might have a very interesting taste challenge coming up though. Somebody said he's sending me some beer that I can't get down here and I'm gonna put it in play against Stag. So get ready because I'm gonna do a beer versus Stag. This is a beer I've reviewed before and I've had. I'd like to get Blatt's again, you know, Blatt's. But um, that's probably never gonna happen. But anyway, all right, so that's it. This taste challenge video is over and uh, I'm gonna start uploading a video now one that I recorded last week. Thanks for watching this video production and you have a very safe and happy Sunday, January 20, <laughs> January 14, 2017.